What's up, America? Kim and Neil here. We are going to be doing a review on my carry gun, the M&P Shield Plus. And we're going to compare it to Kim's carry gun, which is... The SIG P365XL. Before we get started with the video, I'm going to give a quick shout out to a friend of mine, Johnny. He has started a company called Johnny's Coin Rings. He has uh, started a YouTube channel as well, so give him some love. He's also a police officer, so help support law enforcement. I'm gonna show you this real cool product real quick. So come on, take a look. So this is a uh, Kennedy half dollar that he turned into a ring with obviously the back of a nine millimeter as an accent. He has a video on how he actually made it. It's the first video he's ever made, and I actually helped him edit that video. And he has all types of jewelry that he's making, pennants and earrings and all kind of cool stuff, all from coin rings. Obviously made in America, he makes all this stuff himself, so give him some love, there's some links down below. On to the video. As you guys know, I'm a big M&P fan. My, oh my. <laughs> yeah. In fact, Kim's uh, bigger trainer gun is a uh, f the five inch M&P, as is mine. Um, so, I'm also an armor for M&P, been around them a long time. The shield was, and uh, I mean still today, in whatever form, is one of the most popular handguns ever made, without question. And it's for a lot of good reasons. It is a quality gun, it's reliable, and it's very easy to conceal. The disadvantage for a lot of the guns that are super easy to conceal is that they are so small that they don't have a great capacity. Until SIG came along with what gun? With my P365. Yeah, but not the XL yeah, version, the but the 365. <laughs> and they did their magic on the magazine first, how they uh, kind of engineered that, that gun and then it had uh, tremendously more capacity for a gun that was so small and of course Smith & Wesson uh, followed right behind with the M&P Shield Plus. And there's a lot of other changes with this particular gun that we're going to talk about that I really like and a couple that I was pretty disappointed in. We're going to show you guys some up close comparisons of the two. It's also similar in size to the Springfield Hellcat. One of the first things right off the bat on why I really love the the form, if you will, of the new Shield Plus. And the form between the new and the old, I didn't even bring the old one in because the width difference is so negligible, you would barely even tell. But where the big difference is from the Shield and the 365, and the reason why Kim likes it better than the Shield, and I like this one better than the 365, is for one big reason. The width right here, from the front, of the, uh, from the front strap to the back strap. Now, here's where I'm going with this. Give them a high five, will you? So here's, actually we'll do it this way so they can see your hand in this way. Yep. All right, so we're gonna do it like this. So there's Kim's hand and there's my hand, okay? So obviously considerably larger. And one of the big measurements, what do we always talk about when we talk about the big measurement on a, on a pistol? It's from saying? the back strap to where the trigger is. Yep, the front face. So that's a big deal. So being that the grip itself is has more width, and I will show you on the tabletop here in just a second, it allows me a more natural position to get my finger on the trigger. Opposed to Kim's. Mm -hmm. I have much smaller hands. Whereas on the SIG, the grip is a lot smaller from the back strap to the front face of the trigger, it's a lot less distance. And so it's easier for her to get her finger in there in the position that she likes. As I said earlier, I wasn't going to use the original uh, M&P shield, but Kim said you probably should because it'd be a great comparison, and Kim's always right, as I know. So I went and got that one. So the only thing that's going to be different, obviously this is the 4-inch model. I'll get into why that is in just a second here. But other than that, uh, the slide length isn't going to make any difference to what we're going to be talking about. So here we have the two guns. This is the original. This is, again, the 3-inch, the and this is the 4-inch. Uh, this gun, being in the 4-inch configuration, shoots like a full-size gun. This shoots very snappy because it just has less mass. And so this was a huge, if I had to do it all over again, I would never buy this gun. I would buy this one. Uh, the length of the slide and the barrel aren't going to make any difference for concealment. This is what matters. And as you can see, I guess it doesn't matter which order we go to, um, but these are going to be identical as far as the length of the, of the grip for the most part. Uh, no, you cannot interchange the magazines because, again, this is kind of a hybrid double stack magazine. Which looks like this guy. And then this is the original single stacks magazine. That said, and if we put these in here, by the way, there is a flush fit 10 round that comes with the MP, which is in a range bag somewhere that I never use because I bought it specifically for the capacity. But with those on there, you can see again, we're pretty much identical because that little uh, ledge that comes down there. 
let's look at the thing that is different, which is going to be the width. And I guess the best way to do this, we'll, we'll look at it from this angle here. Original, right here, and this is the plus. And as you can tell there, if I use my thumb as a reference, it's pretty much the same with the width. And I put it right here, I mean, that is such a small increase. It's, it's hardly noticeable at all. But yet, it allows you to have a 14 round, 13 plus 1 capacity in the shield. Now we're going to throw in the SIG so you can see another size comparison. So we have the uh, original shield, my SIG right here, and then Neil's um, new shield plus. You can see with my thumb reference how much wider mine is than even his new one. Way bigger. Let's do a comparison of the overall size. So as we were talking about earlier, you can see my grip's a little bit thinner. And as Neil stated earlier, he went the four inch barrels. That's why it's obviously longer. But as you can see, the heights are about the same. All right, Kim, so what do you love about, or what do you like about the SIG? Well, I originally picked it because it came out before they even had that Shield Plus option. And I was excited to have a smaller gun with a bigger capacity. So I haven't actually shot it next, right after shooting my gun. Um, I've shot the Shield Plus one time. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm gonna shoot my gun and then shoot that one and then see what I think. Maybe there'll be another shield. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna switch again. Oh no, all new holsters. <laughs> Obviously the biggest change really is that the capacity, but honestly, beyond capacity uh, is the trigger. The trigger in the Plus, which is also now in the metal and in the new M&P 2.0, uh, there, there's some little differences, but this semi-flat trigger is phenomenal. Uh, when M&Ps first came out, the 1.0, there wasn't a whole lot of love for the, the hinge trigger there. People didn't really like it. They were more used to that, that compatible configuration of Glocks and, and whatnot, and uh, they just didn't like it. And some people like me didn't really care, and it had a pretty severe curve. And so they kind of worked with that for a while, and the M&P 2.0 came out, and it was definitely a significant uh, in, um, improvement, but nothing, like in my opinion, that was a big game changer. This one is a game changer. This is a totally new gun. I mean, I shoot this gun, or this trigger configuration, uh, far better than I, I would on the old, old version, for real. It's a, a trigger that I would never mess with. Uh, in my... 2.0, my five inch that I use for training, I have a apex trigger in that because I like the flat feeling shoe on there. Uh, this one, I would just leave it go. If that was in that gun, I would never have messed with it. It is a different animal. So I'm gonna get up close here in the camera and show you some of the characteristics. We'll talk some more on the range, but right here on the tabletop so you can see this, we'll give you an up close. So here we have the uh, flat, and it's not completely flat, but it's a much flatter configuration for example. There's the original version. So when I put my finger there, you can see the, the curvature of that and the jointed trigger. That has since been replaced with this guy. So more of a paddle now um, as far as that little trigger safety. And it is much, much flatter. It's not quite as flat though, by the way, as the 365. That is just a all metal one piece flat trigger. Okay, so why do I love this so much? Well, first of all, there's the wall. Very predictable. The brake, very smooth. Wall, brake, very smooth. Reset, right there. It is a really, really good trigger. It's, it's fantastic. The old trigger, this one's had a little uh, work done, but the old trigger, it was very mushy, as you can see here. You would press through it, it had a little bit of mush. Wall, a little bit of mush. And then the reset wasn't horrible, but it's nothing like, again, this is bone stock, the way it comes. Just a great, great trigger. This specific model, the 4-inch, is in the configuration of Performance Center, and these are not the stock sights. It doesn't really matter because you can put whatever sights you want on yours or keep it. These had the classic Christmas tree, as I call them, lights. It's a green fiber optic and two red ones in the back. I don't like color to my rear sights at all. And uh, even in my duty guns, I color that out so there's no nothing in the rear. I like a, a, a black rear sight and then a front sight. So I also like the combat edge on these aftermarket ones, but you can, of course, the ones that come with it still have a pretty decent edge, which was my biggest complaint with the original M&P. There is no combat edge whatsoever. You cannot rack this off of anything if you ever had to. 
Uh, I have no idea why Smith & Wesson did that. They should have made that an edge, especially for a carry gun that you may need to one day manipulate with one hand. Uh, so that uh, the, the, the uh, Performance Center sights does have a, a more of an edge on it. Again, these are not those, but uh, a little bit better. Uh, one other big improvement with the Shield, now the Plus, is that uh, the magazine release is now reversible, which they never did on the original, which I never understood for such a popular gun. Uh, for a lefty, that was a big deal. The slide, slide lock slide release is still only on one side of the gun. Not that I really care about that. Uh, takedown is identical. We lock the slide to the rear. The lever goes down. All right. We can take the lever and press it down, and that would allow us to take the slide off without pressing the trigger. Or that we can make sure it's clear in a safe direction, press the trigger, and the slide comes off. And again, this is the 4-inch model. Pretty standard fare, uh, steel guide rod, steel spring, and your standard uh, framework that you have in the M&P. Put it back in reverse order, and it's that easy. So no, no big deal. The other thing I would say that's a big improvement is the grip texture. So on the original M&P, uh, it was a huge improvement from the 1.0 versions, uh, but not as good as this uh, new, the grip texture here is, like a, it almost feels like a sandpaper, but it's not so bad that when you're carrying it on your person, because I, I, again, this is my primary carry gun, uh, I haven't had any issues with it being too abrasive. So they did a, a really good mix on that one. And with the four inch model, it really allows me to get an outstanding purchase. My, all, my complaint, not that uh, it's the fault of the gun, it's just because my hands are so large, when I would, if I got a proper grip on there, it would be, Pretty dangerous. I had to kind of tuck my thumb down. So uh, that's again the other reason why I went with the four inch model as well. Just because we said we'd do a comparison, I thought I would compare it to the grip of the P365. I did have some work done on it, but some parts of it are still the same. So you can see if you do have a 365 or if you're looking at one and you're comparing the two, you can see them close together. I did have mine stippled. I got a Daryl special. We are good friends with Victor's Legacy in Fairport Harbor, and so he did stipple my gun, and he didn't do the sides because that's the part that's going to rub against your body. Uh, so this is the original um, te grip texture, and it is more aggressive than the shield. I definitely would say it's much more aggressive. Another thing to note is that uh, with mine, it actually came with this sight already on it. So these are the original sights. They're called the SIG X-ray sights. We're going to get to my shooting impressions and we're going to put some rounds down range here in a little bit. Uh, before I do, just want to let you guys know, Vetter set us up with this. They're the only ones that I'm aware of right now that actually make a 4-inch shield holster. Uh, Vetter makes some really great products. We'll put some links down for them if you want to uh, check them out. This is the outside the waistband. I got it in this digital uh, camo color and they also provided us with two mag pouches. Their mag pouch is really nice because it's got a, a pretty solid uh, paddle on there so if it's something you want to just put on during the range time and take it off uh, it's got a rubber backing and uh, I've never been disappointed with any of Vetter's products and of course there is a retention adjustment. That said, let's talk about my big disappointment. Here it is. I don't know what the deal is. Um, when I, as you can see, I've actually, I have three of these mags because I, I wanted, again, I bought the gun for the capacity, not for the Flush Fit 10. So these are 13 plus one, which means that it should hold 13. Uh, I lost the footage because I've had this gun now for about seven, eight months and it, it's gone. But my first and only mag that I've ever encountered that I couldn't manually load with my thumb was this. It was so tight, it was impossible. It was so tight, in fact, that I ended up blowing out the bottom of the mag. The spring went everywhere, it was a big mess. Uh, it wouldn't feed in the gun at all, it was so tight. I actually had to use the, uh, whatever the name of that loader is, just to get them in there. And then I contacted Smith & Wesson, which was good and bad. Uh, the first email they said they would send me a new spring or something. I'm like, look, it's damaged. It, it doesn't the the little uh, slot that goes in there is is bent, and I need a new mag. And they eventually gave me a new mag. They should have just done that from the rip. So mm. then they sent me a replacement. And just so that we're clear, I didn't buy this on another website. It's not counterfeit. It's from Smith and Wesson, and it did the same thing. 
So then, and I generally don't do this, then I started watching reviews and nobody complained about it. I couldn't really see anything. And then I had several students that came through classes and theirs were tight, tighter than most mags I've ever seen, but not that bad. So I don't know if there was an original batch way back that I got a hold of and even from the factory it just wasn't right. I got this other one from another um, online store, doesn't matter who it was, and it seemed to work fine. The 10 round mag worked fine. Uh, just this one still today is still unbelievably tight. I don't know what the deal is with that. If that is a problem, leave uh, some comments below if you guys have a shield. Plus, I would love to know because again, I haven't seen any other reviews online where they made that a big deal. To me, that was a huge deal. I mean, I, I basically, brand new gun, and the first mag, I mean, after, I don't know, I loaded it four or five times, it literally exploded. The bottom just blew right up. Outside of that, the gun has been flawless. No issues whatsoever. Runs like a, runs like a top. If you're familiar and you like the, the shield line, you're going to love this gun. I highly recommend 4-inch, just my opinion. And since we said we were going to compare the two, if you were considering getting the SIG versus the shield, uh, one thing I have an issue with this one, the only thing I have an issue with, is you really have to seat that magazine. I mean, you have to really send that thing home because there will be times where it looks like it's seated and then I realize that it's not. Um, so really important, you got to make sure that happens. And then with the regular P365, this is the XL, remember, um, the reason why I went with the XL is because I had to literally move my hand out of the way because the grip was so small. If I didn't, I would pinch my hand <laughs> in there when I was trying to seat the magazine. So we're out here on the range. It's sunny out here, but it's very deceiving. It's actually a very cold day. So we're staying warm when we can inside the truck. We're going to load these magazines, and I wanted to take this opportunity to show you what I was talking about. Again, I have three 13-rounders. Uh, we're just grabbing one at random, so this is completely empty. So we should be able to get 13 in here. And again, I've never really had much of an issue. So there's one, two, nine. So we got 10. So we should get three more. 11. 11. I don't have my uh, little loader, so I'm trying to do this by hand. I don't know. I think that uh, if I really force it much more, one, it, it won't even go into battery. So, because uh, there's just so much pressure on that one. I mean, that is just incredible. And that's, not... oh, there it is. There's 12. Uh, so you can see that's 12. There's no 13 in there. <laughs> there is no way. I'm not even going to, well, what the heck. Yeah, that's not even going to move. We'll see if that will even go in battery. So again, this is from Smith & Wesson. Here's the next one. Let's see if this one's any better. One of these is pretty good. The one that's in the gun that I carry with my duty ammo, I mean my carry ammo, is uh, is fine. So we got one. Here's 10. 11. Not as bad. Oh, man. I got 12 in there. Again, this is the second. 13 round mag, no way am I getting 13 in there. I, did, I forced the other ones and it blew, like I said, it blew the, the base plate out. So Kim saved the day in her range bag. We have our pink uh, loader, so we're gonna try the other two. Here's the one that I carry in the mag. This one should work. Uh, we're using blazer brass, by the way, if you guys care what ammo we're gonna be testing today. There's five. I know loading magazines isn't exciting, but I just wanted to prove to you guys what I'm talking about here. I just find it extremely odd that there's not been any real complaints I've seen online about this. So that's 10, 11, 12, and it was stiff, but 13. So that, that one, that works. So let us take our 12 rounder and see if we can't force 13 in there. Nope. Oh, well, hold on, I just got it. I doubt that's going to load, but what the hey, part of the uh, experiment, right? And I'm actually putting my thumb on here. No, that one's not going. No possible way you're getting 13 in there. It's just not going to happen. I'll probably break the loader. We're going to start out with the magazine you just seen me load. This is the most effective one. It's the one that I could not get the 13th round even with the loader in. So one, we'll see if the gun will load properly and if it feeds properly. Here 
Here we go. Oh. Woo! Now, once we get to 12, magazine goes in easy, uh, seats pretty well, slide works good, but on that 13th round, as you can see, it took everything I had to pull it back. Let's see if it runs that uh, magazine as it is. Okay, so mags fall free, no issues there. I don't get uh, a lot of times with the shorter grips, I get a lot of times the uh, kind of the meat of your hand can uh, interfere with that, keep them from coming out. But I've had, I haven't had any issues with that with the uh, Shield Plus. I don't know, just the way it's designed, I guess, but uh, it does pretty good. So that magazine that will not take 13. I, I wouldn't trust that as a carry. Uh, I, I mean, there's no way, absolutely no way, you could get 13 in there plus one. So you're buying a gun for capacity. That, that doesn't make sense to me. This is uh, one that went to 13. Let's see if I slide release. That worked. Uh, we'll try the next one manually, see if that works. So again, we'll see how we work with this one. Trigger's really, really good. There's the defined wall. Break. 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 That was my normal carry mag. So we can put uh, the 13th one back in there. Yep, seated the first time. We're in there. Oh, there you go. It uh, jammed open because of the pressure of that, that uh, mag. And now it'll seat fine. So we got 12, we're gonna put the 13th one back in there. We have one in the chamber, seat's fine. And that one ran no problem. Seven yard, uh, it's colder than it looks. Seven yard accuracy test here, just slow fire, see how it does. Here we go. All right, come on up here. Let's see uh, what we got. I may have pulled one. No. Never mind. That was a crease. So six rounds, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, gun's obviously very, very accurate. Accurate enough that you uh, can do what you need to do as a great carry gun. So let's uh, speed it up a little bit and uh, put it through spaces. So we are gonna do uh, just a, a reload drill real quick here. I don't know, however many rounds I got left in this, in this mag. And then we'll uh, reload and see how that goes. Uh, the mag well obviously isn't super you know, huge, not, it doesn't have a flared mag well or any like competition type of stuff. So you got to be a little bit more deliberate with this, but uh, I'm sure we can make it work here. Okay, and here we go. Runs fine, get, uh, get that mag in there pretty good. Even for a, uh, I will say that because of the mag uh, being a little wider, the mag well being wider itself, it is a little easier to hit it than in the original shield, so that's a plus. This is something I do every time I come to range and I recommend you guys do this. I can't help myself, but have the trainer come out a little bit. I always like to take a spent casing. Obviously you can use snap caps, but these work just as fine. And I throw it somewhere in the mag itself, all right? And then I put some more rounds on top of that. And you can vary these as many as you want. And the idea here is that at some point you're going to hit a malfunction. Uh, you're going to do some malfunction rather, and we're going to work it out. So uh, we're going to throw this in the gun, run it, then when we get to that malfunction, we'll clear it. Uh, again, something I like to do with every gun, reloads, malfunction clearance, the whole nine yards, all right? All right, here we go.
gonna give it a try now. All right, Cam, what are we doing? All right, so we shot the shield for a little bit, and now I'm going to try to shoot my SIG so I can do a comparison on how I feel about the two. Back to the shield. Final thoughts. I really like the trigger on the shield. It took me a minute to get used to the grip because it is significantly bigger and I don't have very big hands, but I did really, really like the trigger on it. So I think I have to play with it a little bit more and get used to, you know, getting that grip on it because I'm so used to my SIG and that grip being so small. Um, but I really enjoyed shooting it and I shot it pretty well. I was going to show you real quick about the SIG magazines and if you don't really seat them they might look like they're seated but they're not. Um, so if I just put this magazine in here it might look like it's in there and I get around and it still won't go anywhere but it's actually not seated all the way and especially with the flush fit ones it looks like it's in there but it's not. So if you get this make sure you really seat that magazine in. Alright guys so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, as you can see the issues I have with the magazine again we'll figure out from the crowd what the, what the deal is with that but other than that great shooting gun trigger is definitely amazing. Um, you got any, anything else you want to no, add? No, it's it? a great gun. You guys should definitely check it out if you're in the market for one. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a like, up, a thumbs, a share, a comment. We always love to hear from you guys. You can find us here on YouTube. Make sure you hit the su subscribe button. You can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Rumble, and we put all of our premium content on Patreon. Until next time, remember, it's always, it's always better, better to be judged, judged by, by 12, 12 than carried by, by 6. six.